but this no, is good news. Have the chip. You don't have the chip. No. Okay. okay. Can we keep trying to buy a dollar worth of something from you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna keep trying to erase it with like bigger and bigger oh, magnets. Okay, cool. So we want to then try to swipe it. Right. But we needed to find somebody that only used the swipe and not the chip, which right. is like nobody except for the farmer's market. Yeah. <laughs> so you're our guy. So we're gonna go get our magnets and we'll be back. My friends Dan, Jabril and I went around San Diego with the goal of testing what size magnet will erase the swipey part, the mag stripe on a credit card by trying to pay someone a dollar over and over and then touching bigger and bigger magnets to the credit card in between tests. So we'll do, we're gonna do the little one first. I think that's why. Okay. You can't even see it, it's so small. First I'm gonna go like that. Yeah. Does it feel like it's pulling at all? It sticks to my finger more than the card. Yeah, interesting, okay. Yeah. Cash? No way! Uh, hard not charged. <gasps> straight through. Look at this. Look at this magnet. Holy that's Jesus! Yeah. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh my God! Just a this scrap. That's what we erased the credit card with. Oh my God! That's amazing. <laughs> Hey, I'm Diana, you're watching Physics Girl. Just got back from a vacation in Hawaii, visiting my parents, can you tell? But the relevant intro to this video is that everything in Hawaii is like 10 years behind. All kinds of things, like credit card technology. Every shop and vendor says, no chip here yet, mahalo. The chip thing got me thinking about mag stripes because one, they're going away. Well, everywhere but Hawaii, it seems. Which means that soon they're gonna become a fascinating relic of the past, but it also means that there's probably Probably a security concern with them, so we'll get into that. Two, you can hack and mimic them, which we're gonna talk about with a friend of mine who's a hacker. And three, you can erase them. I can't believe that tiny, like you didn't even, like you just kind of were like, the reason I was so shooketh is because I keep my credit cards in a case that has magnets in it. And magnets that are much stronger than the tiny little itty bitty magnet that erased my credit card. So why don't these erase my credit cards? So our next test at the farmer's market was to use this giant magnet. Hold on. Get, oh no. Our next test was to use this giant magnet at different distances. But before I show you what happened, let's find out what we did to the credit card with the little magnet and learn a little bit about how to hack credit cards. Oh, I just drove all the way up to LA to meet with my friend Sammy Kamkar, well known in the hacker community. Well, yeah, there was that whole MySpace thing. But Sammy made something that's gonna be really interesting for us to unravel this whole mag stripe mystery. Sammy, I erased my credit cards today. You erased them? Yes. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's exciting. It's okay. very exciting. <laughs> Yay! We should look at the data on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is black iron oxide. Which is like rust. So don't eat it. Was that a question? Learn, <laughs> learned that the hard way. I wanted to know what was actually on a mag stripe, and the internet said it's magnetic. And I thought, well, what if I get smaller, really small iron particles rather than something big? And that's what this is. All right, so this is one of my credit cards. Yeah, this is what you get. If you actually see those tiny, the dark and thin lines, we can convert those straight into the credit card number. My name is on there, uh, expiration date. All of that data is in those bits. Now, these are the credit cards that you wiped earlier today. Yeah. So I don't really see anything on here. Oh yeah, no, look, there's the swirls with the lines in between. Do you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 you're right. There are those tiny lines. Oh, actually, man, here. that's actually really cool. So actually those are bits of data. And you missed a spot. I know. <laughs> this whole process inspired us to try erasing the credit card while it has iron powder on it to see what it looks like for a credit card to be erased. How about this for visualizing some invisible physics? What we could do now is we can grab one of these cards and we could actually see what the computer says. This is a magstripe reader slash writer. Why do you have these things? Yeah, yeah, research. I can swipe my credit card here and then we'll see data here. It's my name, it's my credit card number. Go wild, people. But we can now use the MagSpoof device and we grab that. Yeah, what is the MagSpoof? Can you just- What is MagSpoof? Yeah, I saw the lines, I'm like, oh, that's data. And that's when I was like, I need want to understand how these work. Can I make one? Like, yeah. Can I make a credit card? So I made a device where you push a button and you're not even touching the reader and it sends your credit card number or someone else's credit card number, depending on. <laughs> I don't so you, condone that. So, no, of course not. Sammy's mag spoof is different from like contactless credit cards because it's emulating the mag stripe technology specifically, which is important because there's other data unencrypted and stored on your mag stripe, like your credit card number, your name, whether you need to use the chip rather than the mag stripe, whether this is a credit card versus a debit card. And with mag spoof, you can change this info. So you could use a credit card where you're not supposed to, like at an ATM. So this is the second version. So I'll turn this on. Dongle life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take mag. Poof. 
This reader is only made to be used as a swipe. Uh, authorizing, processing. Oh, yeah. Please sign here. <laughs> Did you just fail? Approved. <laughs> Transaction complete. <laughs> I think I keep like 97% of that. <laughs> when you're swiping, there's just a read head in a, like a reader that's saying, oh, zero one, zero, 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 one, one. It really is like north, south, north, south, north, yeah. north, south, south. So, just, so I was just producing that same physical phenomena, yeah. but through an electromagnet rather than permanent magnets. This was the original? Yeah, so that was the original, original. So when the current goes through the coil, it produces the electromagnetic force. Yeah. And then if you reverse the current, uh, the reverse field is produced. Yeah. And then I went to Target and I bought something with a mag spoof and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> Sammy has an excellent video on his channel that goes into detail about the mag spoof and how he made it if you want to check that out. I'll put a link in the description. So the fact that Sammy's able to create mag spoof and you can program anybody's credit card number on this and change the data so that you could use the credit card in a way you're not supposed to makes me wonder how other credit card technologies are different. How are they more secure? So we're gonna talk to a scientist from the company Square about that. But first, we're gonna go back to the farmer's market with this. Dan, this is brilliant. So we're just gonna put a stack of these, rub the magnet over it, and then, I don't know what, keep having it or something? Yeah, that seems fair. We decided to use small sheets of paper like a ruler to keep track of how close the magnet was to the credit card, and then we measured the thickness of the papers later. In units of Nine, 10, 11. I wonder if my credit card company is gonna be like 10 times by the same vendor. <laughs> Roasted red peppers. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh, oh man, that's crazy. Look how close that is. That's not that thick. Six cards. There you go. Nothing. Not even a charge read. Oh man, so wait, it must be gone. Even, it's I'm not, not even, even getting the error. Nothing. Anymore. Okay. Interesting. Like it it doesn't even even that's nice crazy. Right <laughs> huh. That's, That's awesome. Cool. After this experiment, we measured the thickness of the cards and found that the difference between six and eight cards is the difference between 1.3 and 1.9 millimeters away from the credit card. Super small difference. And then we figured out how strong the magnetic field was of this magnet at those distances, thanks to a neat little tool on the K&J Magnetics website where I got this magnet and figured out that the field was between 5,400 and 6,000 gauss. To put that in perspective, that's around 10,000 times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. Field. But other types of mag stripes on hotel key cards are much weaker, so they can be reprogrammed and reused. In fact, I have erased those with my wallet. But what's important to note here is that the thickness of even a piece of leather that's say three millimeters thick can make the difference of 3,000 gauss. So you can prevent your credit card from being erased by keeping the magnet just a little bit further away because the magnetic field decays, as we say, very quickly with distance. Luckily, most people nowadays are using chips, which is the last thing that I want want to talk about. Why did chips become a thing? Is it because of the security or the erasability of mag stripes? My name is Casey Wessel. I work as a hardware engineer at Square. So for Magstripe, the concern is that someone could insert a skimmer into the payment terminal itself. So skimmers are really easy to make. They're also very inexpensive. And you've probably heard stories of people inserting them into like gas stations and things like that. That data is never changing. So if an attacker is able to extract that data, they can easily clone it onto a new card. The chip has a microprocessor on on the card and it's sending different data every time it does a transaction. The chip is constantly changing the information it's sending between the chip and the point of sale. So this makes it really hard for an attacker to isolate that information. So if an attacker were to insert something into the terminal itself and they did intercept that information, it's not useful for them to replicate onto a new card or to try to do another transaction. They'd actually have to do surgery on the chip itself that can require a lot of expertise and also costs a lot of money. It costs about more than a million dollars for that sort of equipment. We're constantly trying to encourage sellers to move over to chip payments and contactless payments because they are more secure. So there you have it. Even tiny little magnets can erase credit cards, but it all has to do with how close the magnet is. But there's a lot of security concerns with mag stripes anyways. So yeah, subscribe if you want more explorations of everyday physics things. And thank you to Sammy and Dan and Casey and Jabril. And thank you for checking out this video and happy physicsing.